fellow Blender Maniacs, Alex Cordobard here, and Blender 2.8 Beta is out. How exciting. Now, this is probably one of the biggest changes in Blender since the history of Blender. So, we're going to take a look at a beginner's getting started little series here of 10 videos or so of getting started with Blender 2.8 because it has been completely revamped, new user interface, new rendering engine, etc., etc., and it's exciting, a lot of changes. So, let's jump right into it. In this video, we're going to take a look at the interface and yeah, it's a new interface, it's exciting. Let's get right into it. So, first of all, downloading Blender 2.8. If you go to blender.org, you could download it. There's Blender 2.8 beta. Uh, depending on when you're watching this, it might be the full release, but it should be about the same. All right, opening up Blender, we can see that we have this splash screen here, and we have a couple different options. Now, the shortcut keys for Blender 2.8 have a lot of them completely changed. However, here you could choose to use the new shortcut keys, or you could use you could choose to use the shortcut keys from Blender 2.7. Now, I would recommend staying with the new shortcut keys because, you know, sometimes when things change, people tend to want to stay with the old ways, but I don't suggest that because then it's going to be outdated and you're going to be like a dinosaur. And who wants to be a dinosaur? Not me. So, let's keep it at shortcuts of Blender, which is Blender 2.8. Now, here's a change that you guys may or may not like. You now select with, by default, the left mouse button. I know. I know, painful and strange, but also amazing change. I'm glad that they put it because most programs, industry standard, is left click with the mouse, uh, select with the left mouse button. Blender, it's always been right mouse button. However, you have the option of selecting that. But like I said, we're going to leave it with the default left click select. You could also choose what the space bar does now. So by default, the space bar plays the animation timeline. You can make it go to tools or the search uh, the search bar just like before. So once again, I'm just going to leave the default settings because again, change is good. Now let's get into Blender. As you can see, the interface is quite different and very exciting. I personally like the new interface. Leave in the comments down below, what do you think of Blender 2.8? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Leave your opinion down below. I would love to hear your guys' opinions. So as you can see, uh, the kind of layout is the same. However, we got a bunch of different widgets and gadgets and uh, things all over. So let's jump right into it. As you guys know, and by the way, if you're brand new, this will be a brand new Getting Started series. If you're coming over from Blender 2.7, then this is perfect as well. So whether you don't know anything about Blender or you're coming from 2.7, Let's rock and roll. This first window here is called the, def uh, the default 3D viewport. And this is where most of the action in Blender is going to happen. This is where you're going to model objects, where you're going to animate them, uh, set up your scene, etc., etc. And that is why it is the biggest one, because this is where you're going to be doing most of your work. You can see in the 3D viewport, we have a lamp which we could select now with the left mouse button. I know it's kind of trippy. We have a default cube and a camera. We also have X axis, the red one, and a Y axis, the green one. And then a 3D, uh, sorry, a grid floor. Over here we have what's called the tool shelf, which could be open and closed using the T key. And this gives us a bunch of different gadgets and widgets that we're gonna be able to use in the 3D viewport. This can be expanded if you go over here and get the double sided arrow like that. You can left click and drag it out so that you have the names of the tools or you could drag it in to however you want and drag it all the way to collapse. And once again the T key is to open and close the tool shelf. Up here we have a quite different because if you guys remember if you're coming from Blender 2.7 we had the uh, the options down here now the options or the menu options have been changed to the top up here. You can see that we have all the options up here. However, if you right click on here, you can flip it to the bottom of the screen 
if you like that as a personal preference. But again, I would recommend just leaving it as default because I'm going to flip it back to the top, right click, flip to top, because again, most of the tutorials or courses or things you're going to do, they're going to have it by default. So if you start switching it around, it's going to be harder to follow. All right. So once again, we have a lot of different options up here. And one of the bigger changes also is these gizmos right here, which are used to navigate around your 3D viewport and much more, which we'll take a look at in other videos in this little mini series. And then up here we have some window tabs, which could switch between different window types, which we'll take a look in a second. All right, and now we can see that this viewport is set to 3D view. If we click right here, you can see it's set to 3D viewport. Perfect. Now, it helps to not be so overwhelmed with Blender. If you think of Blender as different compartmentalized screens or sections. So this 3D viewport is one section. The next section is down here, which is called the timeline. Now the timeline, as you can see, if we click here, it is set to timeline and the timeline basically if we right click I know that's kind of weird for some of you 2.7 folks but yes we right click and drag now instead of left clicking left clicking doesn't do anything so right clicking and drag allows for you to scroll through the frames or through the time of your animation and this is basically what's gonna allow for you to animate your scene now, as we saw before, Spacebar plays your timeline or plays your animation. Cool. And then down here, you can see we have some little quick tip uh, functionality. You know, right click, change frame, pan view, transform, and select keyframe. So you could take a look at these bottom uh, little options here to give you some quick tip help. All right, the next window we're going to take a look at is the outliner. Here, if you go right here, actually not the outliner, the properties tab, my bad, the outliner's next. See, I'm so excited, I'm jumping ahead. So this one right here is the properties tab, and right here, this gives you different tabs and options as far as different things that you could do with, uh, you know, for example, add, adding materials to your objects. Let me click my cube because the materials isn't showing up. Adding materials to your objects, uh, rendering out your animation, adding uh, physics, physics simulations and particles and hairs and all that stuff so the properties gives you a bunch of different properties to mess around with different things in your scene now the next window type is called the outliner right here you can see we're set to outliner and the outliner is basically set into collections if I click on this little arrow right here you can see that it drops down a collection and in this collection we have a camera a cube and a light which I could select by left clicking now, if you guys remember from Blender 2.7, down here we used to have what, are, what were called layers. We would have 20 layers. However, now it's set up into collections. So the collections act as your layers. We no longer have layers in Blender. We use collections now. And the outliner is very helpful because here you could choose whether an object is visible in your 3D scene, whether it's clickable, whether it's rendered, etc. And also when you have a lot of different objects in your scene and you can't find your object, it's very useful because here you could just search, for example, for cube, find it right away and be able to select that object. So Outliner comes in very, very handy. Now the next window or header that we have is just this top header right here, which basically like any default program lists all your different tools and functionalities here at the top with file here where you could save your projects, uh, edit where you have the user preferences. The user preferences are now under the edit tab, not under the file tab. You have the render and window and help. Also, something that's different is we now have tabs, kind of like your Internet Explorer having different window tabs. Here we have different uh, layout tabs of the Blender interface. So right now we're on default layout. We have a modeling layout, sculpting layout, UV editing, animation, etc. And these layouts basically allow for you to quickly switch between several different modes where each of these tabs is more conducive to that particular thing that you're wanting to do within Blender. All right, let's go back to the default layout. So once again, once when you first open up Blender, it can be so overwhelming, but 
when you realize that it's compartmentalized into different sections or windows, we got one here, the 3D view, second one here, the timeline, third one here, the properties, fourth, the outliner, and kind of five is the header up here, then you realize that it's not so overwhelming. Lastly, before we finish this video, let's check out the uh, let's check out how to add windows or how to minimize or collapse windows. So very simple. All you have to do is go down here to any corner, or not down here, but if you go to any corner, you can see that your mouse turns into a crosshair. So if we go to the bottom left here, left click and drag. You can see that it splits the 3D viewport into two windows. And now we can change this one to, let's say, the timeline window. And now we have a timeline and a 3D viewport. Cool. Now, how do we collapse these back? Well, if we go to the bottom left here, we get the crosshair. If I left click and drag to the right, it's going to split the window again. However, if I go back here and left click and drag to the left, that's not what I meant to do. <laughs> okay, let me let me collapse these. If I go over here, let me try that again, and left click and drag to the left, you will see that you have a big arrow that shows up. That means that it's going to collapse the right window with the left window. And if I now move it to the right, you could see that I could either collapse the left window to the right or the right window to the left. So whichever you let go of your mouse so if I let go of my mouse click right here it will collapse there and then I could do the same thing left click drag to the left and let go of my mouse and it will collapse the window cool now very lastly I want to show you how can we collapse these windows so that we only have the default 3d viewport well we can't just collapse this one into this one because this is one window we have two here and one here. So we first need to merge these two windows. Let's go ahead and do that. Once again, by going to any one of the corners, left click and drag. If we drag down, it will create another window. But if we drag up, it will merge. Once we let go of the click, it will merge the two windows. So now we just have the outliner. And now we have two windows here. So you can only merge one window into another window. We can't merge this one into here because we have a third window here. So we first need to merge these two together. Left click and drag this one down and merge that. And now we have one window here and one here. We can simply left click and drag to the right. And boom, we have the 3D viewport or the 3D view in the whole scene. Now this isn't too practical because you usually need some of your other options from the other windows. So let's see how to quickly add these back. Let's go to the bottom right here. Left click and drag out. And let's change this to the out uh, the properties tab. And now from the top here, we're going to left click and drag down. And once again, once you get the crosshair, that is when it's going to split the window. We're going to change this one to the outliner. And then down here, we're simply going to left click and drag up and change this one to the timeline. And then you could also expand and minimize the windows by getting the double-sided arrow when you hover over the window divider like so. Pretty cool. So that is the interface or yeah, the interface, the new interface of Blender. We're going to take a look at a lot more in the following videos and hope you guys are enjoying this so far. I'll see you in the next video. Make sure to go to BlenderMania3D.com. Join the community there. You could share your work. Join the contest that's happening, by the way. Uh, really exciting prizes. Awesome community of like-minded Blender artists. I look forward to seeing you there. Hope you're enjoying Blender 2.8, and let's rock and roll. I'll see you in the next video. Ciao for now. Au revoir.